Hello everyone, this is Julia. Thank you so much for joining me on my craft room adventures. Today I have this super cute shadow box card, like wintry happy mail shadow box card to share with you. And then I stamped out all of my images from the Merry Mice stamp set. And also the little bird from Christmas is coming by Hello Bluebird. And I'm using C7, C5 for my darkest shade on this mailbox. Just adding a little bit of shading on the edges, then blending that out with C3. Then going in with C1, and I didn't want to add like too much darkness there, but I also wanted to use the cool gray on the, on the mouse. So I did want there to be like a bit of a contrast between those two. So I just blended that out with a C0 and now I'm going in with C3 for my mouse. And I'm blending that out with C1. So that it's basically like a gray and gray white mouse. Or like a gray gray is that grayish grayish white. Blending that out with C0 and then I'm going in with C double zero. Going back in with a C3 just to add a bit more shading and definition. And look back in with C1. And then I'm blending that out with the C double zero. And I'm also adding a little bit of blush with the R20 and also adding it to the inside of the ear. I'm blending that out with the C double zero. I'm also using the same C markers for the envelope, just a little bit of the C3, then C1, and the rest is C double zero. I wanted like an orangey, like a light orangey red color for my accessories. So I'm using R24, blending that out with R22, and then R20 as my highlight shade. Oh, I'm sorry, R21. Going back in for a second layer of the same shades. For my bird, I'm using some uh, BG markers, and for the scarf, I had the idea of kind of creating an ombre pattern of the colors that I used. So I'm using BG11, BG10, and then I'm also bringing in the R21, and the colorless blender to blend between the colors so that there would be like some a little bit of a fade between the two. And I'm also using the BG11, and the BG10 on my little birdie. And I'm also bringing in the BG quadruple zero for this. And a little bit of YR12 on the beak. And I die cut the main piece of the Lanfon shadow box twice out of Bristol Smooth cardstock. And I just used the square window to cut like the opening. I'm ink blending with spun sugar and worn lipstick. And when I do the die cutting for these kinds of dies, because I hate like the marks that you get on the back of your die cuts from the die cutting machine and I'm also adding just a quick side note a little bit of abandoned coral because I wanted to match the coloring that I did on my critters so back to the die cutting I always add a piece of copy paper on the back of my like die cutting panel and that just keeps the back side smooth so if you wanted to like ink blend it on there or if it shows in any way it's just nice and smooth so I'm just blending the colors back and forth, bringing in the colored panels to see if it matches up. And now I'm also adding the same shades to the second piece that doesn't have the window cut out of. And if you do this, make sure that the little flap that would attach the shadow boxes faces in the same direction each time. 
because otherwise you will blend the top on one panel and the bottom on the other. Please don't ask how I know that. <laughs> this was fun to do. <laughs> Again, just blending the colors back and forth, making sure that the two sides match up, that I pull the color down far enough so that it looks seamless. Just going back over with the abandoned coral a bit because the other one was still, this one was still a bit more pink than the other. Then I went a little bit too much with the abandoned coral, so I'm going back in on the other panel just to make them all match. I die cut the snowy seam die, just the like snowfall part, and I'm ink blending it with peacock feathers just to match with the teal colors that I, uh, that I used on the critters. Just adding a little bit of darkness around the edges. And now I'm ink blending the sides inside the shadow box. If you're doing this, make sure to not just mask off the back, but also the little flap on the left. Because one of those you will be seeing behind your like snowy pattern. So just a heads up on that. I also die cut the glacier peaks or glacier peaks. And I ink blended that with some pumice stone. Oh no, hickory smoke, I'm sorry, the stress oxide. Then I'm stamping the sentiment from the... I'm not sure which stamp set it's from, I will list it down below. Uh, and I heat embossed that one in silver onto the hilts that come with the die set. And now I'm just folding along all of the score lines that the die creates. And I also added score tape to the flaps. To add some trees, I die cut the winter woods overlay. And now I'm just lining up the two box card pieces and I'm just pressing it into the adhesive and there you can see the like teal that is showing on the back and since I have like the snowy cutouts there it would be showing so I'm just using some white poster tape along the score line to basically just cover that up to make sure that it's not visible later just making sure that the like edges of the poster tape don't stick out and that fixes that little issue. So the recipient will never be able to tell that I forgot to mask that off. I die cut the two hills out of white cardstock and I also added score tape to the sides. I added them to the right side. Then I'm removing the score tape on the other side and I'm just folding the left side in into the adhesive and then just removing the last part and just folding the card shut. And those come together really, really quickly, so those are a lot of fun to do. Then I'm just adding liquid glue to my background panel. Just a few dots all around. And then I'm just sliding that in. Making sure that the edges are nicely lined up. There's a little corner at the bottom missing, but you really can see it when you look at the card. Then I'm also adding in the mountains. I added the like white mountain tops off camera just with some liquid glue. And then I realized that it would look prettier if I had like a third hill in the back. So I just die cut it and added it in when the card was assembled. You can always add those in later. It's just a little bit more fiddly to do it. It's easier to do it when you assemble the card, but this works just as well. You can see me fiddling with it a bit. But, you know, this works and I thought that the final, the third hill would just look a lot nicer altogether. Now I'm adding the bow and the little bird to the mailbox and the envelope to my mouse. And I'm just playing around with the placement of my images. I realized that the envelope needed to go like at a bit more of an angle. And I wanted to add the mouse on the front of my shadow box so that it would be like basically front and center. And then the mailbox goes on the hill directly behind it. Just added some liquid glue to the very bottom of the die cut. And I'm just looking from the front, lining it up so that you would be able to see it through the like uh, snowy trees. 
Then I'm adding the Nouveau Aqua Shimmer Pen in Glitter Gloss. And also some Stardust Stickles on the bow and also the rim of the hat and the mountain tops. And that finishes off my card for today. I just love those little shadow boxes. They're so cute and they just make the cutest decorations because they're, oh, they just add a touch of cute to any place really, don't they? I really like how it turned out and it's just like a wintry happy mail. I know it's a Christmas stamp set, but I think this, those would work for like with fall colors, with winter colors, just for like any occasion really. Thank you so very much for watching. I will be back soon with a new crafty video and I hope you'll join me. Until then, have a wonderful day. Bye!